what we've got so far in the in this uh, what we've got so far on this blog post is text, and text is nice. But if you look at most um, articles, most most posts, there's some kind of graphic. So I do recommend that we add graphics to our blog posts, and they can be photos or drawings and such. But then that gets us to the issue. I'm not an artist. I'm not a photographer. How do I put pictures on my posts? Well, not how to do it. It's very easy, but what kind of images can I use? And the short answer is no. Do not use any picture you find online unless you are sure that it's a, that it's a stock image and such, which I'll explain in a moment. Because the point is that if you, you can obviously do a search, and uh, I'm looking up here uh, public domain graphics. <laughs> nope. So I'm searching for, if I had the idea, I want to use a picture about blogging. Obviously, I can search blogging and get millions of results. My short answer to this is don't use any of these. Uh, don't run the risk of using an image that someone has copyrighted or, or trademarked and such because maybe they won't find out for years, maybe they'll never find out, maybe they'll find out next week. And the person that owns the picture then says, at the best, please take it down. At the worst, their lawyer asks you to take it down. So um, I would not do any normal kind of searching here. And yes, we can search a certain way, but forget about that. I'm going to show you, like my notes say here, a couple of places where you can go directly to avoid all of those issues. Number five, Choose images that relate to your topic. Use your own original images or appropriate stock images. Now I've got the keyword here, stock images, royalty-free images, public domain images. If your images that you find online are not designated as those, they're not okay for you to use. Well then I also say, visit this website, which we'll do right now, pixabay.com, for some. On a technical level, well, I'll get back to that. Let's visit pixabay.com. Open another browser window and then uh, go to pixabay.com. Pixabay.com. This is a website that dedicates itself to high quality commercial use pictures. Because sometimes when you find the perfect picture, on a regular Google search, and let's say it is royalty-free or, or public domain and stock image or whatever, and it's low quality. It's a really small thumbnail, and you want the big version, and it's not available. Well, Pixabay, right away it tells you, free, high-quality images you can use anywhere. So yes, you could find a picture here for your blog post and use that same picture for your website and your brochure and your billboard and all of that. These images are going to be okay for all of those endeavors. Because sometimes you find an image that says this is okay for a website but not for printed. And you say, okay, I'm never gonna print it. Well sometimes you might find images that say uh, free for non-commercial use. So if you're trying to make money in any way from your website, directly or indirectly, that's a commercial use. And if you want to argue about it, great, they'll see you in court. That's what they're for. And so it's better to go to where the best images are to um, not have trouble. Unfortunately, you're not going to get a million results of cats. Just like you can go on a Google search and get 10 million results of cats. Here, I'm going to get a smaller pool of results, but they're the ones that are going to be safe. So I'm going to search for the same thing on Pixabay. I searched for blogging. Let's see what appears. What I'm going to say, though, one thing is be careful. When you search for anything on Pixabay, ignore the very, very, very first line of results because that's the sponsored ones. That's going to take you over to Shutterstock.com where they will sell you images. So whatever search you do here, just skip the first line. Look at that. Really nice pictures. High quality pictures about blogging, computers, or whatever. So everything on Pixabay is free, uh, uh, 
royalty free? Yes. Uh, public domain? Technically not public domain, but yes, royalty free uh, for commercial use. Yeah. Except for the sponsored one? Yes, except for the sponsored one. So that's why we're going to skip the first row. So if we do a search on Yahoo and we find 17 million results of blogs, there might be a few in there that, that fall under the criteria that we want. Don't even chance it. Go to pixabay.com and search. And I'm only getting 245 images, sure. But you're probably going to find a dozen of them that fit within what you need out of those 245. But did you say some of the Pixabay are um, commercial, or, or they're all free? They're all free uh, public domain or royalty free? They're all free except for the first line of sponsored images. Okay, just the first row. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing here various results, and let's say I wanted to use this, this one here. Uh, if I click on it, on any result that you like, click on it to see it like this. And then it says, okay, would you like to download small, medium, large, extra large? So that extra large is, is print quality. That I can make a poster out of that. And if I want it, notice technically it's public domain, not really royalty free. There are technical differences, but free for commercial use, no attribution required, public domain, free download. And so you're able to click on any one of those picture on any one of those sizes to download. You may get a pop-up that says, "Please type in that code." And once you type the code, it should let you download. And now you can use that picture, as I'll show you how, um, on your blog post. But this is one of the websites that I would say to to visit to find. Notice it says at the top. You can uh, search for photos, vectors, and illustrations. So photos, of course, are, are pictures. Photos, vectors are kinds of drawings, usually very geometric drawings. And illustrations are, are, are drawings, logos and such. So when you search here at pixabay.com, you can then also say under the search, you've got the search box and then options. You can say search, but then only show me illustrations, and that they are horizontal in a particular category, and they have a particular color. So where is the code that lets you download? You need to click on the free download button. So you're not going to find. I, I so it says type. In, I I did that. And it says type type in the text, but I don't see the text. So you're not going to find thousands of results, millions of results, but you should hopefully find the result that works uh, for you. And what I like about Pixabay is that people or designers create accounts here. And let's say I'm looking at this particular one. This, this was uploaded by Foundry, you know, whatever user uploaded this, they have an account here. And this says that they've uploaded 526 other images. So you can, uh, you can look at the, at the works that a particular uh, user has uploaded and if you create a free account at Pixabay, you can follow an account and you'll get an email when they've uploaded a new image. So I'm, I, I don't have an account, so if I click follow, it'll say, please create an account. You don't have to do that, of course, but if you do create an account, you're going to 
um, be able to follow and comment and, and do that stuff and save the particular images that you like so you can come back to them later. So just, just a moment. Just a moment. So yes, I am. The people who are putting their work up there for others to use. There are some versions that they, I mean, there are some photos that they will sell, and then they can also um, get more recognition from their work because they could give, be giving some away for free, and then they have their premium, uh, their premium photos on this or other accounts. So it's like a little free sample, and then the more um, expensive ones, they can sell those too. Question. If that were, you know, after you download, how do you uh, how do you then position it um, and the size of it in your text? I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you I'm gonna text to wrap around it. I'm gonna ask you a little favor. Everything that I'm every question that you might have, I have it planned and I'm gonna answer oh, in the class. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna ask you a favor. Please really please, please don't please think <laughs> before asking a question because I planned this class. To answer every every question, so every question that you've asked me, I've answered. So okay. please I'm let's really let's follow really along for a moment, here. and you'll see that I I think I have this class organized. Okay. Well, just let me ask: Are there other sites besides Pixabay that have the royalty-free images? There are. How do you find them? So Pixabay is one of the sites here. That I really enjoy because you can uh, you can search and um, create an account and find uh, what you're looking for. Um, Pixabay is is one of the ones I recommend, but I also recommend over here at um, you probably heard of Wikipedia, right? Wikipedia is a free encyclopedia, but it's part of uh, a larger organization called Wikimedia. So if you go over to Wikimedia, W-I-K-I, media, M-E-D-I-A, dot org, Wikimedia is a, is a great website also to find a variety of free content like Wikipedia. Wikimedia is the larger um, parent company of Wikipedia. So if you go to Wikimedia, And then we go over to the Wikimedia Commons. Let's go to Wikimedia Commons. So Wikimedia Commons is, is like a Pixabay in that it has, notice at the top here, a database of 27 million freely usable media to which anyone can contribute. So that means uh, pictures and illustrations and video and, and here and there, uh, this and that. So Wikimedia, again, you're not going to have the, you're not going to have 20 million, 27 million results just of cats, but everything related to uh, just about anything that you can search is going to be found here. So at the top right corner you can search, let's see, blogging. There's different categories like blogs. It might suggest to you to look at a, a deeper category, but um, again, it's it doesn't have the whole scope of a regular search on Yahoo or Google and etc. But um, you're going to find images that are safe for you to use. So there's Pixabay, there's Wikimedia, one more and then we'll, we'll go back to our blog. This other one that I also like, um, 
again also has images that are okay for you to use. The caveat is, this site that I'm about to show you, there's a section where all of the free to use images are at. Uh, so I have to remind you about that. It's a section. So if you go over to this website called, called deviantart.com, deviantart.com, it's not as bad as it sounds, deviantart.com. This is an artist's community where people upload uh, their photos, their poems, their crochet. It's an artist's community. And so this is what I'm saying about, let's be careful here. Most of the work that you find here is not okay for you to use. I'm just going to show you the one section where the people upload stuff that is okay for you to use. So I mentioned this as the last one because we have to see here specifically. Go to deviantart.com and go to browse at the top left. <coughs> you go to browse and then on the left side we have categories. And the category that we want to look in is resources and stock images. So under resources and stock images is going to be the place then where people up, have uploaded some nice scenery or drawings or logos or free fonts, um, all of that stuff. So if you're going to use DeviantArt, you're going to make sure that you're under the resources and stock images section. Then you could go to the section of clip art, um, stock images, textures, tutorials. So people that upload to here is, is, is where you can download the good stuff. Everything else wouldn't be okay for you to use on your site. stock images. And then you can do a search, because it's going to be a lot of stuff, and then you can do a search um, to narrow it down. So sometimes you might find an eclectic image that is not available over at Pixabay or Wikimedia, but um, here under DeviantArt you have to make sure that you're under the the appropriate section, the stock images section. So it's under resources and stock images, but then you need to be in the stock images? If you, if you need particular images, then you should go further into stock images. But then we've also got fonts uh -oh. and textures and stuff, so you might want to go into textures for textures. So those are all in the open. In the yeah, those are all in the higher section of resources and stock images. Yeah, so that whole grouping is, is uh, royalty-free. Everything under resources and stock images is yes. royalty-free. Mm -hmm. So let's do this. Make sure either from Pixabay, Wikimedia, or DeviantArt you download one picture and then we'll add it to our blog post together. Um, because our blog post is, is good so far but it's just text. So go ahead and find one picture, save it, and then we'll upload it in just a moment.
It's going to depend on the picture. Sometimes it's uh, JPEGs and sometimes it's other formats, but uh, they should be high quality. No, um, unless it specifically marks it. So there's plenty of times that I've been spending a lot of my effort finding the perfect images. And um, you're obviously able to do that, but the images are just one part of the puzzle. That's why I have that handout that has those, all of those points. If you're spending a lot of your time just on the images, don't forget the other parts of my advice here. So if you haven't found the perfect image, that's okay. Download one and we've got to move on now. But I've downloaded one, and now I'm going to go back to my post. My post is still opened, so I'll show you here how to add a picture through WordPress. Um, I've got my post here, and let's say I want to add a picture, and there's a bunch of ways to do this. Let's say I want to add a picture to the left of some of this text, like ideas on blog posts. I want to add a picture to the left. So you need to click on the spot where you want to add the picture. I'm going to click here to the left of my text. And it used to say, WordPress used to say add picture. But now it says add media. There's a button right there that says add media. Because we can add pictures, we can add sound, we can add video in WordPress. So they don't call it add picture anymore. It's add media. So you want to click next to where you're going to add the picture. Click add media. <coughs> and we've got a screen to upload so you can click select files. And now it's just a matter of finding where you downloaded it. It probably went to the desktop. So I found my picture on the desktop. I'll open. I have a variety of options here on my screen because this, this needs some details nowadays. Notice what I've got here on my, uh, on my notes. I was saying for uh, number five, get royalty-free images. And then at the end it says, on a technical level, make sure your file names are meaningful and you've added alt text. Well, the thing about pictures that is very nice is that they give visual interest to your post, but it's important to also optimize your pictures. You may not think about that. I'm just going to add a picture. But you want to optimize your, your images as well, and, and here's some ways. Uh, one of the ways, this is a catch-22, we, we will not be able to do it, but I'm telling you for next time. I'm uploading a picture. Pixabay gave me this picture, and they called it girl seven nine. 177 underscore 1280. That's not a very good file name. And the thing is, we cannot change it in WordPress. I needed to change it before I uploaded it to WordPress. But that's okay, we're just learning this. But the point is that the search engines look at every detail of your website, even the file names. So if you take a photo from your camera or, or a digital uh, camera or your cell phone, whatever, most likely it'll have a name such as image. 11248, or maybe DSC14628. Those are not good file names. The search engines will penalize you a bit for, for not having good file names. A better file name would be something that explains what the picture itself is. 
So right here, girl79117, that's not a good name. I cannot change that in WordPress, so I'm going to live with it. But it would have been better to upload it with a better name, like, uh, you know, girl blogging typewriter or keyboard or something. And so what's better is under title, that's a better thing to, uh, to edit. We, we do have control of that. This title here, we, we can edit it and say right here, blogging made easy. It doesn't have to literally be what the photo is. Again, think about it in terms of being found. People are searching, and so think of these keywords that people might search for. Do you ever see that when you're on a website and you hover your mouse over something, you get a little pop-up, a little bit of text that pops over? That's the title right there. So if you want that little bit of text to pop over your picture, it's your title. Caption is the text, and this is optional, that appears under your, under your photo. So you can put a photo on screen and then you can put a caption right below it, this text right here. And if you want, you can make your title be the same thing as your caption because not everyone is going to be able to see that little pop-up. For example, on a mobile device, you can't hover over a picture on a mobile device. You just tap it. There's no hover on a mobile device. So if you put it as a caption, people can see it where they cannot hover over. So on a technical level, title and caption are optional. They're not that important for SEO. But then the third one here, alt text, is very important for SEO. <clears throat> alt text is the alternative text. This picture, I can see it, and most of us can see it just fine, but did you know that people that are completely blind can still browse a website? can still visit your website even if they're completely blind because a person that needs assistance they would have a computer that reads to them uh, they have their speakers on they visit my site and then it's gonna say link how to blog link home link contact us it's gonna read to them and they then have a keyboard a special keyboard memorized where they know what to press on the keyboard and it'll open a link, or it'll go to the contact screen, and so forth. But then the computer struggles when it gets to a picture. Because even the smartest computers at Google are not smart enough to really analyze what's in a picture. It may be able to vaguely tell you, this is a person, or maybe hands, or maybe a car. But there's no computer smart enough that will be able to say, this is a family photo, and there's Uncle Joe in the pool. There's no computer that'll be able to do that. So that's where the alt text comes in. This is the text that then the computer would read to the, to the blind user. The person that couldn't see the picture, the computer will read them this alt text. And nowadays, the search engines really highly uh, value that. If you add alt text to your images, um, the search engines will like that. And therefore, you'll get better SEO. You could have all three of these the same, or you could change them. But again, be aware, if you put something in title, not everyone will be able to see title because they can't hover. You don't need caption, perhaps, because you don't want the text to appear on screen. But you definitely want alt text. Even if, you, even if most users are never going to see alt text, the users that need alt text are going to be glad that it's there, and the search engines will We'll, we'll, we'll praise you for that. And then we've got description, which this one just shows up internally in WordPress. It doesn't, um, it doesn't show up 
visually on your website. This is just something for you. Because the thing about WordPress is it's not like a classic website where you make folders and you put all your images in certain folders. All your pictures go into WordPress, the big old WordPress database. And therefore, you have to rely on search inside of WordPress. So if you're trying to find a picture that you uploaded four months ago, you, you're either going to scroll back, scroll back, scroll back to find it, or you're going to search for it. So if it's got these fields filled in, like description, you should be able to find it. That's one of the big downsides, I think, for WordPress. It doesn't have very good image organization. It doesn't let you create subfolders of images. It's just all the images are uploaded, and then you have to search for your image. So the description is more for me when I need to find my picture later. And then we have some attachment display settings. Alignment, none, or left, center, right. So if I say none, this picture, even though I clicked to the left of my text, this picture is going to push the text down if I have it on my default of none. If I want my picture to be on the left and my text to be on the right, then I choose left. If I want my picture to be on the right and my text on the left, then I choose right. And if I want the picture to be centered right on the screen, well, we've got centered. We have different sizes that we can choose here. So if I uploaded my picture, but I forgot to resize it, WordPress gives me a bunch of built-in sizes. Very useful. The downside, though, is uh, I'm, I'm not going to rely on this to upload my photo straight from my digital camera. I'm not going to upload that 20 megapixel image because I'm certain that WordPress will resize it down for me. That's a waste. That 20 megapixel image will still be on your server. There will just be multiple copies. WordPress will automatically create a medium version, a large version, a thumbnail version, and so forth. And so you'll have various versions of that picture, including the 20 megapixel one that you'll never use because it's so big. So you should still upload pictures at a high quality, but not a quality straight out of the digital camera. High quality, what I would say is, whatever the maximum whatever whatever dimension either width or height make it a maximum of about 1200 pixels 1280 pixels so if you've got a portrait maximum height 1280 it'll stay in proportion for the width if you've got a horizontal picture maximum width 1280 that's going to be still big pretty high quality size um, but not so big that it takes a long time to download. And of course, if you've got seven of those 1280 pictures on screen, that's going to slow you down. So that's why WordPress gives you the ability to do different sizes. And you don't want to upload your image raw right out of the digital camera. So let's say I'm going to choose uh, to display the full-sized full -sized version of my picture. Or maybe I think, well, I'll show a thumbnail so I can easily do that. And the cool thing is that if I select thumbnail, then I have a, back here link to media file, which means that not only will it show the thumbnail size, but it'll have a, um, a link built in so someone can click on it and they can see the original picture, the original size. So I can add medium and thumbnail and then the, the person will still have the ability to click to see the large version. In addition to media file, I have attachment page which is a little different. It still shows you the larger picture but media file will only show you the picture on a plain white background. Attachment page will show you your picture 
uh, with the background of your theme, of your design. So if you only want the picture all by itself, media file. But if you want it to be larger on a, on a page, it's attachment page. And let's say instead I want that picture to link to a completely different website or a completely different uh, page. If I select custom URL, I can add here an address anywhere else that I want. So in my case, actually, then I'll select none. I don't want that link, uh, that picture to be clickable like a link because I'm already going to show it on the full size. So any of those that you would like to do will, will work fine. And after you fill in all of these items here, then you can click Insert to Post. And you see, you'll see here that the uh, picture went to the left of my text. Question. You could use it for that as sort of giving yourself a, a credit, but uh, be aware that this is just text that appears below the picture. It's not really attached on the picture. So if someone does download that picture, there's no that text does not follow the picture. You would have to uh, put a, your own watermark in, in a graphic software like Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Now let's say I added a picture. If you click on the picture again, you get the options there to align. You get the little X to remove the picture, and then you also get this pencil to, uh, to go back to that edit screen. Going back to my handout, uh, we're jumping now to number uh, eight. So number eight, links. A relevant internal link to your own blog posts, which are on your own site, is helpful for keeping people on your site longer. A link to an external link, which is someone else's site, is helpful when you want to try to get backlinks. When setting internal or uh, when setting external links, remember to make them open in their own tab. So what I'm saying here is that I'm writing this blog post. This is about blogging uh, for restaurants. What if I have already another blog post that I write that I wrote about top five tips for small businesses, the um, top five social media tips for small businesses. The person reading this blog may also be interested in that. So I want to have a link from this blog post to that other blog post. I want them to read both articles. So if I want to add links, I can do it to pictures or text. Usually we're doing it to text. 
because sometimes it might not be obvious that a link, uh, that a picture is a link. So let's say I've written something and I want to make this a link. Uh, let's say in my last post I showed you the top three small business tips. So I want a link from this post to another one of my posts. Anything can be a link, so this whole sentence can be a link. Um, that's overkill. What's underkill is when you see something that says read here, and that's a link. That's not good either. Making the whole sentence a link is not good, because then you're not being specific to what you're trying to do. Making something literally that says read here, click here, read now, that's not good either. Because if you take that link out of context by itself, it makes no sense. Read what here? So a better link would be, in my case, top three small business tips. That's what I would make the link. Out of context, that makes sense what it is. The top three small business tips. It's not the whole sentence because people don't need to read the part about in my last post. It's just th top three small business tips. That's what's going to be the active link. So step one, of course, is to select what's going to be the link. So I've selected here top three small business tips. And then I'm going to click at the top bar here, my edit bar, I've got this little uh, chain. I can click insert or edit link. And this pops, pops up. Okay, enter the destination URL. We have two options. One is to add the address, the URL, of someone else's website. Or below here it says, or link to existing content, link to your own posts or pages. I, this is just my test site, so I don't have that other blog post. But if I did, it would show up here. And so if I wanted to link to my other post, I could just select it and click Add Link. And so here, uh, now that text, out of context, would make sense. In context, of course, it makes sense. It's an active link, and it goes over to another page on my site. You want links between your blog posts, because that also is a factor in SEO. Uh, the search engines want that your content is not a dead end. When someone visits this one blog post and reads this post, the search engines want people to then read another one, to go to another post, another article. And so all you simply need to do is some text on your post. You need to set it as a link by clicking that little chain. And if it's within your own site, you're going to click at the bottom to your existing content. I mentioned two types of links here, the internal and the external. I just made an internal link from one of my pages that went to another one of my pages. I also want to think about adding some external links, which is a link from my blog, my website, to someone else's website. You think, well, why would I give other people free traffic? This is part of the strategy of getting back links, which are links from other people's site back to your site. Uh, those other sites won't know to link to your site unless you make them aware of your site. So if I have a link from my site to someone else's site, that other web designer, that other webmaster, will get a notification on an email, most likely, that says there's a new link 
to your site. So that other website will become aware of my website. And it might end there. It might say, great, and they move on with their day, they never think twice. Some people will get that link, will follow the link back to my website, will see that I've got relevant, important, interesting things, and I might then get a link back. That's the backlink. And it's really going to depend on a variety of factors if, if people follow through. But they will not know that unless you're linking to them. They will not know that you exist unless you link to them. That's not to say that I'm going to add 10 links on my blog posts. I'm going to add the, uh, I'm going to add the, um, uh, the relevant ones. I'm going to link from my site to another site that is related, and I'm not going to go overboard. I'm going to say one link is enough. Um, one external link is enough. If necessary, you can add more, but it's very easy to go overboard and for your blog post to look like spam when every paragraph has three links. So one link to an external site is good. I might even say up to three, but then I'm not saying always add three links, and I'm not even saying always add one link. But I'm just saying that if you are going to add a link to someone else's site, one should work. Same thing with your own internal links. You could be linking you would have one link on every one of your five paragraphs back to your other content, that also looks spammy. Because uh, you're going to have all of these links that stand out differently from the rest of your text. That's often a spam technique. So one internal link, one external link. So two links in total, that's good. To add the external link, if I select some text, so let's say um, I wanted to make the, the text GoDaddy a link to GoDaddy or someone else's blog post or something, I would go back to the insert link and here I would have to copy and paste the person's address, the other website, to, uh, to make that an active link. And I add that link, and now that's an active link just like before. But now that's an external link. And again, the point of that is that you're trying to get backlinks. You're making those other websites aware that your website exists. Once other websites know you exist, they might link back to you. Number eight, organizing. Set up categories and tags, as well as author pages. Use categories as the largest organizational units. And I have here an example of a bakery, which would be using maybe cakes, pies, and cookies. And tags are the fine-tuned organizational units, such as chocolate, sugar-free, birthday. With author pages, you are establishing authority in a subject and putting a human face behind the words. Plus, all her posts will be linked together. So what I'm saying here, is that we want to organize just like you wouldn't be you wouldn't be very well off if you've got all of these documents in the real world just thrown together they should have some organization these are related to something so they're they're marked together the same thing with our blog posts here the default organization is pretty terrible on the right side do you see there's a categories and it says uncategorized so the mark of a beginner in WordPress is that all your posts are saved as uncategorized. No, no organization. And below that we've got tags. I believe when we were here last time, we talked about setting up a few categories, didn't we? If we didn't, we'll, we'll do it again right now. But the thing is that the uh, categories section 
um, is a way to organize. So I have this, uh, this web design company and I'm going to be adding uh, blog posts. So I'm going to be writing on a variety of topics. This particular one that I'm writing seems to fit in sort of like the how-to category. I might have how-to's, I might have tutorials, I might have advice, I might have testimonials. Remember we created a few last time. Uh, mine doesn't show up here, but if you had created categories previously, they'll be listed here and then you can select them and you can organize them into more than one category. You can create a category on the spot here. I need a category, so I'm going to click Add New Category. This is what would you like to name this category. This is going to be, well, I'll call this my small business category. The small business category will have a variety of articles, a variety of posts about small businesses. I can put that as part of a parent category. Usually I don't. But once I've written small business category, here's the odd thing. The odd thing is that you have to click add new category here, and then you write the category, and then you have to click add new category here. Uh, it, they should call this name new category and this one create new category because it doesn't actually get created until you click add new category. And now it highlights here. This blog post is under the small business category and the uncategorized category, which I don't want. I can turn it off. I believe I said previously one to three categories uh, should work for your for your posts. Um, if you overload it with every single category, then you don't then you might not have the best organization actually. If everything can fit into everything, how are people gonna find something? So one to three categories, usually one will work. And then below that, we've got uh, tags. Last time, we created a few categories, but we didn't get to tags because oftentimes you can think of these tags when you're actually writing the post. And so this particular one is about... Um, this is about, uh, you know, the Restaurant Owner's Guide to Blogging. I could tag this as blog, blogging, it might be too generic, I'm going to say uh, restaurant, so I'll type a category and click add, tips, this one I could add uh, three to five tags, you say, well, what's the difference between, difference between a category and a tag? This tips could be applied to articles in small business and in parenting. Let's say I also write uh, advice on parenting. So small business, the parenting post would not fit in small business but they both share the commonality that they have tips. So in a sense the category could be the specific divider. This is about parenting, this is about business. And then the tags could be a little bit more generic because they encompass things. Maybe someone is looking for tips and they and they see the results page of tips and it's got this, a couple small business tips and it's got a couple of parenting tips and such and they might read. So what we'll do is uh, we'll take a short break, our last break, because it's a good idea to think about what sort of tags and um, 
and categories could apply to my post here and maybe also think about it in the longer term. So if you haven't done so yet, you want to click Save Draft. We'll take a break um, just until 8.30. So we'll be back at 8.30 and then we'll keep following my list. And when we come back, we'll, uh, we'll keep wrapping it up.